Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm here today to do another series talk video, this time on The Queen of Air and Darkness by T.H. White. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what series talk is, I will leave a link to my explanatory-ish video up above, but basically what it is is it's talking in depth about particular books within a series, or one book within a series, with the idea to go through the entire series. So for this series, I already talked about The Sword and the Stone um, back a couple months ago, and now I am going to talk about the Queen of Air and Darkness, which is part of the Once and Future King. Um, and these are a different style of video than I normally do because they are spoilery. Um, I am going to be talking about the content. Part of the reason of doing this whole project or style is actually to be able to talk about past book one in a series um, because I'm very sensitive to spoilers um, so I don't like to do things that are spoilers unless it's very clear this is we're talking about the content so hence series talk is about talking about the content of the book so first off we're going to talk about the details when did this come out? All of that stuff. And then the book itself. So The Queen of Air and Darkness by T.H. White is the second book in the Once and Future King series. Um, this came out in 1939, but then my revised edition is from 1958. I'm not entirely sure how much, like, there is definitely content in here that is from the revised for the Sword and the Stone, so I don't know how much there is for the Queen of Air and Darkness. One of the challenges with that is that it's also called The Witch in the Wood, um, and I, when I looked it up, it looked like The Witch in the Wood came out in 58, but clearly in my copy, it's, um, it's, it's the Queen of Air and Darkness in this bind-up, so... This one is a bit confusing on that whole thing, as well as the fact that it's complete, but it's also isn't complete at four books or at five books because the fifth book's book was published post no, posted after the author passed away. So it is a complicated one and all that stuff. The genre for this is Arthurian or fantasy or depending on how you look at it, historical fiction. Um, and um, I read this in July and August of 2019. I read it during Grinchathon. Um, and uh, within a week, so reading it during a readathon really helped. Um, and I gave it an eight and a half out of 10 or a four out of five. Um, I actually gave the Sword in the Stone, 10 out of 10, so or 5 out of 5, so this one I did not enjoy as much, but I still did enjoy it a heck of a lot. Um, this one was shorter, it was only 102 pages long or something like that, and um, it's quite different than The Sword in the Stone. Uh, the Sword in the Stone follows Arthur as a kid, learning from Merlin. Merlin becomes his tutor and so he learns about the world and animals and he turns on animals and it's very much adventure story and he goes on adventures and is curious about the adventures of life and the natural world and these kinds of things. Um, whereas the Queen of Air and Darkness sort of splits its time between different stories. Arthur is now an adult. Um, he is the king um, and or he's one of the kings <laughs> um, and uh, he uh, um, he is dealing with being at war, and war is definitely one of the themes of this story. Um, he still hangs out a lot with Kay, and Kay and Arthur have very different opinions on just about everything. Um, and um, it's interesting to see, because in this one, Merlin, technically, he's around, um, and he's he feels like technically he's still his sort of tutor slash advisor but he doesn't tutor him like he it was really interesting to see that Merlin would not answer directly he wants Arthur to make up his own mind it's important for Arthur to make up his own mind so he kind of sometimes sets up a scenario or asks a question sometimes even a leading question and then we see you know, what the response is. And then also we all, <laughs> I love Merlin so much. We also get to see or hear read his like reaction to things. And often because Kay is very like gung ho and he wants to do this. And even Arthur in this one, he does sort of is excited about the, the, the mayhem, not the mayhem, but like the, like the, the uh, about the battles not necessarily about the war so it's it's even thinking and talking about those t as two separate things you know the actual being in battle and battle fever and like you know overcoming great odds and or not great odds they talk about the odds a lot i can't even remember who had the better odds um but uh you know um and but that versus theory the theory of who should or when 
or if you should ever go to war against someone else. That came up again and again. When or if should you ever go to war against someone else? And they do talk about like the fact that the people that are that they're fighting feel like they're in the right and everyone feels in the right and 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 the hurt or the 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 what it goes back to is before generations before the people that are now still fighting. Um so all of that was pretty interesting, but it was also pretty theoretical and I feel pretty strongly about how I feel about stuff and it was kind of painful. Mostly it was painful to see Kay be like start to like answer before Arthur and stuff like that and then Merlin's reaction. I love Merlin. There wasn't tons of Merlin in this one, so that was slightly disappointing. But generally it was still really really um interesting from that perspective um but um not my favorite like like war is not one of my favorite themes is my least watched film genre it's probably my least read uh book genre um because i feel very strongly uh, like on one side of the fence of that uh, that you know so but i'm not going to get political but um yeah so that was one huge theme of the story we also have the whole queen of air and darkness or the witch in the wood and actually very much like the sword in the stone who that was um or the impact of that person didn't happen till like the very very end of the book um it's it's early setup so we're talking about and i actually am going to have to refer to there actually is a family tree here that was helpful did i make note of it uh i remember it being right near the end there we go so we have a family tree um and we spend a lot of time with a different group of people in this um one of which is um queen more gaze, more gaze. And I don't know if it's generally Morgana, um, and because there's also Morgan Le Fay. And so we have a set of, I think, four sisters, or is it just two? Three. Morgan Le Fay, more Gauze and Elaine are the ones that are listed here. Um, but we mostly actually spent time with um, four brothers or cousins, was never quite sure, uh, Gawain, Agravain, Gaharis, and Gareth. Um, those are the four that we spend a fair amount of time with. And their, I think it's their aunt is Morgaz, and she is a witch, as all the women in her family are. Um, and there was actually some, there was some horror, there was a fair amount of horrific stuff in this one. Like, she boils a, is it a cat? <laughs> and then eats each of the bones individually to see there's apparently one bone that if you eat it, you become invisible. But of course, because she is a woman and she is beautiful, she does not want to be invisible. She just wants to know which bone it is and she's passing the time. So there was some gender crap in this one, I would say. Um, you know, both in terms of the fact that she mostly values her beauty um, and and I don't know, like there, I just didn't, I didn't love it. There was also some gender crap where, when the four fellas, the young guys, they, they, um, they go on this quest. They want, there's a couple of quests in this one and, oh, but before we get to that, so more gauze is the, is the character of note, I think, for the witch in the wood. I think that's who they're talking about. And she actually is Arthur's half sister. So, which is one of the reasons why they have the whole family tree thing. Um, so yeah, and it's weird because we don't spend that much time with her other than the cat and the, the boys try and do something to impress their mother or aunt. Isn't that horrible? Even this tree, I can't tell. Um, I think it's their aunt and totally does not impress her. And what they do is horrific horrific but it's one of those things that you know the author is doing it to show you that it's horrific and show you that it's not okay to do this and to show you that some character like you like i end up <clears throat> liking the characters that understand that this is wrong and i'm not going to support the characters who are like like this was fun or i want to do this again or, or or are not even emotionally connected to the horrific thing that they do um and that was involving a unicorn and um the whole thing capturing the unicorn um like by 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 tying uh the kitchen maid down by her hair and just not treating her as a person it's just all of it and then all of the stuff with the unicorn was horrible it's horrible horrible um but i did um 
And I do want to, I think I might reread the beginning where they talk about um, the four guys are talking about their family and they're talking about the history and they, and you get a stronger sense of who they are as individuals. Because for me, one of the reasons why I like, I want to read this and why I like reading different Herthurian things is that I honestly legitimately can't remember, like can't keep straight who all the different knights are and what their different sort of personality types are and characteristics are. Like everyone knows Arthur and Lancelot and um, Guinevere, of course. Um, but like beyond that... I, like you like I still remember some of the other knights but they're all from different references and so I want to because like this one like obviously um Gaharis and Gawain like Gawain I think is Arthur's I can't remember nephew I think he's his nephew or his cousin which I don't know anyway so that whole part was interesting but horrifying. <laughs> but then I think my favorite part of this entire book and the story was actually all about um, King Pelinor um, and the questing beast. And I think because I partially remember that from uh, Lamor d'Arthur when I read that. Um, and he, you know, he, he, I just, I just really like that part of the story. He, you know, he, he, I think he falls in lows, but then he falls in lows, but then there's this questing beast and he feels the need to go on an adventure. He is a knight and knights have to say yes to adventure. So he leaves and he wants to find this questing beast. And then I actually found some of the story hard to understand because this text is like, you know, it ain't from yesterday. And like the, it's tiny and I don't retain all of it, but I'm still committed to reading this. Um, but one of the things is uh, Pelinor's friends, they decide, okay, he's got to get this questing beast. He's got to finish this quest and like get on with his life. So they dress up as a questing beast to attract the actual questing beast. And it's, it goes, it's a bit of a comedy of errors. And I really enjoyed that whole part of the story. That was my favorite part of the story. Um, other than learning, like learning about um, the four brothers or cousins, even though some of them were horrific. So Pelinor definitely got the win on that. I did really enjoy him. Um, as a character and and his perspective and he's quite earnest and I tend to like that and you know so and he was very confused as to why they would dress up as a questing beast and then I, everything about the questing beast I really really enjoyed so that was a complete joy so I'm really happy that I got back to this it took me a lot longer than I expected to get back to it I think I read the sword in the stone in March and then I didn't get to this till July so I do want to finish out the five books by the end of the year so I have to be a little more intentional um, in terms of uh when I read them, um, because I also don't like to read more than one book per genre at a time. And technically, I sort of classify this as fantasy, and I'm reading a lot of fantasy and urban fantasy. So it's the the schedule's getting a bit full. But I am looking forward to the next one, which is the ill made night. But I think I will write out this family tree, uh, because we do end quite dramatically with um, uh, Morgaz like uh, seducing Arthur um, and getting pregnant. Um, so, uh, yeah, which is part of the story too. I think most people know that part of the story. I did mention there are spoilers, right? Like if you've seen, like uh, most of the Arthurian stories do, do talk about that as well. Um, not all of them, but most, I think the ones I know the best talk about that one. Um, so I am looking forward to the next title in the series. It is a bit longer, but the chapters are teeny, teeny, tiny. Sometimes they're only like one page. So that bodes well for me, being able to read something that's harder, but know that I only have to read a page or two definitely works. Um, and apparently those, the, those four brothers or cousins are the Orkney clan. So yeah, and so I am I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. I don't know who the ill made knight is in the next book. Um you know, I don't know who it is, but Pelinor was the win. Uh, Merlin was also the win, um, but didn't get as much of Merlin in this one as in previous books. So there you go. There is my thoughts on the Queen of Air and Darkness or the Witch in the Wood. Um, so um, I hope that you enjoyed that. Um, I do, the one of the challenges I do have these videos is I figure I don't know how much I need to research because I mostly do still want it to be my own reaction. So some things, especially with this series, like the dates and like, like what it's called and like, you know, is it four or five books? It's a little sketchy and I don't want to look too much into it because there are more books to come and I don't want to inadvertently spoil myself. So I hope that that's okay. As always, if there's anything that I mention, all the information about the book will be down below as well as the um, talking about the sword and the stone, the video, I'll link that below. Um, and uh, yeah, so there you go. One more book down, three more to go, almost at the halfway point. Very excited. Thank you so much for watching.